Operation Stickleback, The Adventures of Small Fry, who travelled from Rosegrove to Manchester and back. Rosegrove Engine Shed was once home to lots of steam engines, which were at local lines delivering goods and passengers all over East Lancashire and beyond. The water used to fill up the water tanks of the steam engine was drawn from the nearby Leeds and Liverpool Canal, which ran alongside the rear of the engine shed. When the engines were sent away to Crew Locomotive Works for repair, it was said that the men who worked at Crew could tell that the engine came from Rosegrove because when they came to drain the engine tanks, they were full of sticklebacks, which had been sucked in with the water from the canal. This story tells of the adventure of one such stickleback called Small Fry, who found himself sucked from the canal into an engine's water tank and describes the characters he met whilst travelling from Rosegrove to Manchester, Victoria via the Todmorden Curve. a male sickleback who was about to become a father. His belly turned all shades of vermilion to attract a female sickleback. He had prepared a special nest at the bottom of the murky Leeds Liverpool Canal. There he waited patient there until one day a female finally arrived. Dancing in a zigzag fashion he led her to his cosy nest. The eggs finally hatched. Hundreds of inquisitive fry explored their watery home. The youngest stickerback was named Small Fry. He had three sparks along his spine and he was the most adventurous fish in his family. Father warned his son not to swim to the top of the canal for their own safety. Small Fry wondered what was lurking above their protective home. One day, Small Fry spotted a shiny bright thing illuminating the canal. He swam to the surface to investigate, disobeying his father's orders. The water felt warm and pleasant as Small Fry became hypnotised by the sun's rays. He turned over and over, revealing his silver belly, which reflected in the flashing sunlight. Suddenly, a huge black pipe was plunged into the canal. Small flower was pulled into a whirlpool and sucked up the, the rusty pipe. He was spat in, out into the water tank, which was pitch black and deadly silent. Small fry took his fins from in front of his eyes and looked around him. Suddenly, his breathing returned to normal as he gulped down the water. Oh no, thought Small Fry, panicking suddenly. We are heading in the one direction. He's not tracked Tormodon. Despite his sadness, Small Fry became aware of a lot of noise coming outside of the train. He could hear people chattering and shouting, Half fries for cheese, one pound fifty a wedge, or... Th Oh, thank you for shopping at Tobbin Treats. He could also hear the tinkling of the bells of ka ching of the ca cash register. It was at that moment when Small Fry realised there was a rumbling sound coming from the bottom of a tank. What do you want, the thing asked abruptly. Who are you? I'm Small Fry. I'm a stickleback. I got flushed into this tank by accident and I didn't ask to be here, so there's no need to be so rude. The thing swam slowly through the murky water and a Small Fry could finally see that BDI actually belonged to another stickleback. He was a dull grey and Small Fry noticed a patch of scales was missing from below his left eye. My apologies, said the old fish finally. The name's Old Spike. I'm afraid I've been in this tank too long. I'm not used to visitors. How long, asked Small Fry, his eyes wide open fear. Too long, replied the old spark simply. The train had begun to climb now, looking over the top of the tank. Small Fry could see a black 
gaping hole in the hillside ahead. What? What? What's that? he asked. That's a tunnel, replied Old Spike. That's a summit tunnel. The old train rushed through the gloomy mouth of the tunnel and the damp darkness filled the engine. Let me tell you a story, said Old Spike. Is it a scary story, whispered Small Fry, the scariest of them all. When, when they built it, they didn't realise they was disturbing something terrible. This terrible something has five rows of razor-like yellow teeth. He slivers through the tunnel on rough scales. They, they say you can still hear the clickety-clack of the trains. It was 1984 and I was a young fish. I could smell it before I saw it. The smoke scratched and my gills and my eyes stung. I heard shouting from over the valley so I swam to, towards the noise. It was then I saw it. A towering cloud of black smoke choked the air. It curled itself around the hills like the, the serpent itself. Was it the son of st serpent? What it turned out to be was far worse than the stuff the, of fairy tales. Little fish, it was a fire. It was an uncontrollable raging fire which spat out ashes onto the hillside for days. But how? What happened? Two oil tankers derailed, sp spilling oil all over the track. So don't you worry yourself with still stories. The real danger is all around us. At that, the whistle blew again. And small fright felt grating of the brakes as the trains began to slow. After what seemed like an age, there was another screech followed by the sharp whistling, and the train was still once again. Small Fry and Old Spike were flapping around in the shallow water. Time was ticking on as the little fish fought for breath. The pair had cowered into the corner of the tank, where the last of the water remained. At that moment, moment there was a dull clunk, followed by a scraping sound, and then light exploded into the tank. The circle of light was then replaced by a huge staring, staring eye. The eye belonged to a tall man with large features. Although his face was color covered in coal and soot, he stared down at the fish kindly with an amused expression. Oh, you poor things, he gasped carefully. He cupped two fish in a firm hands and gently placed them into a billy can. Albert brought them from, down from the train and carefully, not to tip the billy can, he placed them on a ledge by the ticket office. A little while passed and in the distance, Old Spike and Small Fry saw a cat coming towards them. The cat was really quite extraordinary. Her fur was pale grey and silky with patches of brilliant white. Around her neck was a violet collar, studded with gleaming gold spikes. Her tail fell sleekly behind her and curled up slightly towards the end. On her head sat a large satin bow in shades of indigo. She yawned lazily, revealing perfectly pointed white teeth. Is that thing going to eat us? asked Small Fry nervously. Most probably, replied Old Spark. Greetings, fishies. That cat purred mischievously. Who are you? sputtered Old Spark. What do you want with us? I say, what kind of fish are you anyway? A fish? She laughed.
and no fish but a fabulous feline. My name is Tora and at a guess I would say you two aren't from around here. We certainly are not, began Small Fry, feeling a little braver, and we're trying to get home. And where is home? asked Tori. Rose Grove, replied Small Fry. I've been on a terribly long journey, and all I want to see my family, and sleep in my nest at the bottom of my canal. Why, that sounds awfully dull. Wouldn't you rather give Manchester a try? There are all sorts of things to see and do. One. To the Family Theatre to see a show. I bought tickets on the front row. Otrada Hilton is the best place in town. Sip on a cocktail but don't look down. of the train blew loudly and despite everything the little fish knew it was time to go home. I'm so sorry Tore. Manchester sounds incredible but I'm afraid I miss my family too much to stay here. Small Fry said sadly. It's been great to meet you added old Spike. Even if you're you are a funny looking fish. Tori looked up at them with with tears sparkling in her eyes. A strong hand came down and picked up the billy can. Goodbye, little fishes, she called. Albert had placed the billy can at the front of the train and the little fish could see for miles from the large front window. They rushed swiftly over bridges and into tunnels and then lush green countryside stretched before them. Small fries Anxiety melted away. The beautiful greens and blues felt like a different world into the dark and terrifying one he had journeyed through earlier. I, I say it's a much better view from up here, exclaimed old Spike. They seemed to fly along the track. Rochdale sped by, then Littlebra, and then around the curve once more. Up, up, up to the copy pit summit, and then a swoop down into Burner's Manchester Road. Small Fry could could bear, barely contain his excitement as they finally pulled into Rosegrove Station. Upon arrival, Albert picked up the billy can and carefully stepped off the train. He walked across the island platform, climbed the stone stairs and made his way towards the canal. Nearly home, lads, Albert reassured the wary fish. As they reached the canal bank, Albert bent down and gently released his adventurous friends. Small Fry leaped for joy, swishing his tail and flapping his fins. The pair made their way down to Small Fry's familiar home. 21 miles in 52 minutes, remarked Small Fry. I think I'll buy a season ticket.